Director Baum, in case my mom is watching, I want to be really clear. I'm not advocating for the legalization of marijuana. I will be very, very clear about that. However, I don't understand why it's a Schedule One. Um, it's certainly not uh, treated as a inherently dangerous substance for which there is no medicinal value. It takes a tractor trailer full of marijuana to even trigger a mandatory minimum under our drug laws. So is there any appetite for researching whether or not it should remain a Schedule One drug? Uh, Congressman, uh, the, the administration doesn't have a position on that, uh, but I'm happy to dialogue with your office. And let me just briefly say that we strongly support research on medical use of marijuana. And if there are obstacles that we see that prevent good research, we want to address those obstacles. Because if there are component elements of marijuana uh, that could be put through the FDA process and turn into medicines that could help people in this country, we want to do that. So we do think there's some potential and we support research on the subject. Well, just so everyone's clear, methamphetamine is scheduled what? I believe it's scheduled two. Cocaine is scheduled what? Also two. Cocaine base is scheduled what? Uh, two. So it is scheduled lower than marijuana. And again, you can schedule something and still not have it scheduled as a one. And, uh, and, and I would encourage uh, the powers that be, whoever you need to consult with in the administration, to at least explore whether or not it's scheduled correctly uh, without being perceived as advocating for legalization. Understood. With that, Mr. Connolly, I will give you a chance to I'm reluctant to say whatever you want, but I'm going to give you a chance to, uh, <laughs> well, to I, conclude. I thank my friend, and I, I actually want to follow up, if I may, on so uh, the point being made here in some ways, Mr. Baum, is if you, not you personally, if, if, if the government, federal government, on this subject, marijuana and how dangerous it is, has no credibility because of the lack of serious empirical work, it threatens our whole drug policy's credibility. And you're seeing this happen on marijuana in the states. They're, they're making decisions. Ms. Norton talked about eight states, but there are over 25 states that have in some fashion, including my home state of Virginia, liberalized their laws for medical reasons all the way to recreational reasons. You, I think you'd have to confess to the chairman's point, there was no empirical evidence to justify putting marijuana 50 years ago as a Schedule One drug. Who did that empirical evidence? Sorry, could you repeat that? Who, who did what? Who made it Schedule One? There was no, um, I am asserting, and yes. you can feel free to try to contradict, there was in fact no empirical evidence to justify putting marijuana ahead of the drugs the chairman just listed as a Schedule One drug. 50 years ago. And I would, so you, you brought up the need to have empirical research before we start rushing pell-mell uh, to approve it for medical purposes, and I agree with you. But here's the problem, as I said in my opening statement. Only one federal entity, NIDA, controls marijuana for legal purposes for experimentation, testing, and the like, research. And NIDA's mission is all about proving the harms of something. They have a priori determined the outcome of research. Nobody thinks NIDA is an objective, neutral place to go to look at the good, the bad, and the indifferent about marijuana. It doesn't have that credibility. So if we're going to do what you suggest, we need to have a different entity with credibility where we're looking at objective evidence and science. And then we can determine, well, where does marijuana work? Mr. Humphreys made the point that there's a more lethal uh, or stronger, more fortified uh, versions of marijuana coming out that concern us. But we put a lot of people in jail, and we've treated this like it's more dangerous than cocaine and the other substances of the chairman, and, and it's had huge consequences based on very little scientific evidence. I'm not arguing for the legalization either. I agree with my friend from South Carolina. I'm not going there. But neither can I justify the current policy of treating it as the world's most dangerous drug with its classification. 
you can feel free to respond, and I'm done. Congressman, I, I, I understand the point that you're making. I would love to go with you in your district to talk to police, uh, police chiefs and sheriffs. I think in reality on the street, uh, police, sheriffs, they don't treat marijuana the way they treat heroin and fentanyl. Uh, so I think in practice, uh, there is a prioritization of the most deadly drug threats. Uh, I, I think, I actually think that's his point, um, is that law enforcement doesn't, our sentencing scheme does not. Um, methamphetamine and marijuana are not treated the same from a sentencing standpoint, but yet marijuana is considered to be inherently dangerous with no medicinal value, therefore a Schedule One, And it, it would just be helpful, again, to Mr. Connolly's point for us to have some consistency or at least be able to explain uh, why certain drugs are, are scheduled one and, and others are not. And, um, you know, we can save that for, for another day. And again, that's coming from two people that are not advocating for the legalization, um, just for some common sense in how it's scheduled. Um, on behalf of all the members, I want to thank all of our uh, witnesses for your expertise, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Flattery. Uh, in your case, your very um, uh, tragically earned.